You know, ladies and gentlemen, each year down at the Magic Castle in Hollywood, they award the uh, Close-Up Magician of the Year. Now, we happen to have with us in the studio this evening a young man who recently won the Close-Up Magician of the Year at Hollywood's Magic Castle. And I want you to greet him with a great big round of applause, if you would, please, Mr. Earl Nelson. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, first of all, uh, I'd like to thank very much Charlotte and Jean for coming up here to sort of help us out for this little experiment. I think if, if any of you watch the Magic Palace regularly, you probably hear one word used very much, and that word is illusion. But very, very few people have ever seen an actual definition of that. And with your permission right now, I'm going to give you a visual definition of that word illusion. And I've taken the liberty of removing five cards from the pack. Now, just so that they're easy to remember, those five cards are in order. The ace, the deuce, the three, the four, and the five. They come that way from the factory. You can see them. That's, I'll go very slowly so that you can appreciate everything here. I'll begin with one card right off the bat, and that card is the ace of spades. Now, it looks as if that ace of spades is being pushed right into that group of cards. However, let me stop at this point and remind you that this is only at a definition of the word illusion. That didn't really happen. And since I have five cards in total, we could place that ace right in the center of those five cards, and I think that's even a better illusion. But still, nonetheless, it's only an illusion. The ace does not leave the top of the pack. Maybe this is a little bit confusing. I could understand that. That's why I only use five cards. I am going to eliminate the ace. That might make it a little bit easier to understand. We'll get right down to the next card. That's the deuce of spades. In fact, Charlotte, I'm going to ask you, if you will, just to reach over there and push that in yourself. Now, did that feel as if it went in? Mm -hmm. yeah. Would you like to turn the top card over? Interesting, interesting <laughs> phenomena. The deuce of spades never leaves the top of the packet. Maybe that's a little bit confusing. I'll tell you what, I'll eliminate the deuce of spades. We just have three cards remaining, the three, the four, and the five of spades. Now, I did some experimenting, I must admit, and I found out if I turn the three of spades face up and place it between the four and the five, the trick won't work. So I won't do that. What I will do is turn the four and the five face up like that, place the three back face down between them, and I find that it does follow suit like that, no pun intended, but it doesn't last very long. You see, I just shake the cards like that, and the three is back face down once again. You see, the three is a very contrary card. This is not the kind of, I don't think we should use a three at all. It's a little bit confusing. We'll eliminate the three. That leaves us two cards only, the four and the five. The four and the five goes on top of the four, and yet. Maybe that's a little confusing with all these cards. We can eliminate the four altogether. The only problem is that leaves me with only one card. I have no cards under which to put this now. It's just really hard to do something with one card. I don't know if you've ever noticed. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, we were talking a little bit, several of us, before we came out here, and we were, uh, someone brought up the point of, have uh, ever uh, embarrassing incidents happened to you, you know, when you've just been about to do a show? And uh, I recalled one that happened to me. I was about to go into one of my favorite effects, which is cutting the aces from a shuffled pack of cards. Uh, when a gentleman that was sitting over here reached over very politely and took the deck of cards in his hands and plopped them down in front of him, very methodical. It wasn't anything I could do. I mean, I didn't want to embarrass the gentleman. He was very nice, you know. He cut the pack like this, and he turned half of it face up. So he had about half face up, half face down like that. Then he proceeded very methodically. The guy obviously knew how to handle cards. He shuffled the face up cards into the face down cards, just like that. And he wasn't content to do that only once. He did it a couple of times like that, very neatly. I was very impressed with the whole thing. But I didn't know quite what I was going to do to get out of this. He, he very neatly squared the cards up once again like that. And then just to make sure that everything was all right, just he picked the cards up and looked through them like that to make sure he'd shuffled them very neatly, and he had. Give them a cut, and he put them right down in front of me again. Well, I thought the only thing I could probably do at that point was to go into the original effect that I had in mind and try to cut one, two, three, well, 
three. <laughs> the fourth one could be a little bit of a problem, you see, because of the terrible condition that he left the deck in, all face up, face down. So the first thing I have to do is straighten out his mess like that so that all the cards are facing the proper way. That's three out of four aces. The last one, the ace of spades, is a little bit more difficult. If you watch the exact center of the deck closely enough, you'll see one card and one card alone reverse itself. Wouldn't it be nice? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Well, most people believe that all of this sort of thing is attributed to sleight of hand, uh, dexterity, uh, the hand is quicker than the eye. That really isn't absolutely true. I do everything I can to promote that belief, but it's not absolutely true. It's all dependent upon luck, I'll be very honest with you. All of these things that you see done here are very, very uh, dependent upon the element of luck. If I were to give the cards to any of you nice people here, you'd be surprised at what you could do yourselves. For instance, if you were to give the cards a simple little shuffle, such as I'm doing here, and then cut them, give them a simple cut on the, on the table like that, one card might possibly fly face up out of the pack. Now, this card happens to be a king, which is a rather high card, but after all, there are four kings in each one of the decks, so it's really not that big of a coincidence. By the same token, you could also give the cards a simple cut, such as I'm doing here, and you might run across, just by luck, king number two. That's the king of diamonds, the king of diamonds so far. Now, the third one, they do get progressively more difficult because obviously the more kings you are removing from the pack, the more difficult they are to find. But if I use a little bit of skill, not much, but just a little bit of skill and a lot of luck and shuffle just like they do in Las Vegas, I might be able to find king number three. There's king number three. Now, to be very honest with you, on the last one, impossible to find by luck, but this one I have to resort to actual magic like a mind of its own there it comes out the king of hearts That's four of the I'm going to rise to the occasion here and show you something not with a full deck of cards but only with these eight cards that we so conveniently come across here as a matter of fact the kings and the aces being the highest cards in the deck make that rather easy, but I think I'm going to eliminate the kings. This will make it even easier to understand. We'll get back to those in just a moment. Just concentrate on the aces for a moment, if you will. And we'll do it one ace at a time, very, very slowly. There's the ace of hearts. Watch. Very slowly. A slight discrepancy. Now, that king is supposed to be over there, you see. What's happening is they're changing places one card at a time. That was the first one to go across. Watch it happen again. Another king, another ace change places. Now, that does leave me with only a couple of aces remaining, which quickly become a couple of kings. That part's nice. <laughs> But it would be even better, I think, if I could just give the cards a little shake like that and start over again with the aces and the kings. Thank you. I'd like to do something right now. You've been so kind as to, uh, to help me out with this in the way of what I call loosely a challenge type of effect in magic, and that is I invite you to watch as closely as you possibly can. And I'm going to do it as slowly and deliberately as I possibly can. And for it, I'm only going to use a few of the cards. Only a few cards. Now, it's no secret how many cards I use. In fact, let me count them again so that there's no mistake. I should have precisely 12 cards. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Ah, I think I've got one too many cards here which can easily be eliminated. We don't need the Queen of Diamonds for this. Now, the idea is really simplicity itself. I'm going to utilize also, besides the, the uh, 12 cards, the ever-popular four aces. Now, the reasons that magicians use those so much is because they are the highest cards in the <coughs> pack, and they're the easiest cards to remember. Now, it works out mathematically that I can allow three cards for each one of the aces, and that's exactly what I'll do. 
I want you to remember one thing. The aces will stay face up and in full view at all times. I wonder, Charlotte, if I could ask you just to place your hand over that pile of cards. Would you do that? Great. Would you like to please name, Jean, any one of the three remaining aces you like? It doesn't make any difference. Name it aloud? Sure. Yeah. Okay. The ace of hearts. The ace of hearts? That's right over here. Watch the ace of hearts, if you will. No longer present. Would you like to also name one of the other two aces? The ace of clubs it is. Watch the ace of clubs. One last look at it, all right? How about the ace of diamonds? Is that all right with you? Yeah, we'll try that. The ace of diamonds. The ace of diamonds, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to let you see right to the last moment. Thank you. That's, uh, that's not the full thing, obviously. I don't want Charlotte to touch anything that may be under your hand. But as dramatically as you know how, lift your hand straight up in the air. Would you turn those cards that are face down, face up, one at a time? That's one. That's two. That's three. Thank you very much. Thank you.